By late summer, it's extremely common to have a thin, struggling lawn. The, like, dirt patches? Yeah. I actually saw some tiny, tiny moles. You think we can fill in these dirt patches? Yeah. All right, let's do it. It may have a lot of green in it, like the lawn you see behind me, or just some green in it, but it's probably thinned out quite a bit. Today I'm going to show you how we can fix this lawn and thicken it up in just a few weeks' time so that the homeowner can enjoy this lawn for the remainder of the growing season, which is still another three and a half months. Now, if you own a snow shovel and use it about once a year or more, that's my definition of probably you have a cold season lawn, then this video is going to apply to you and you could use the techniques in this video probably anywhere from the month of August, September, or October. You see, cool season grasses germinate best when the soil temperature is quite warm. And August tends to be the time of the year when soil temperatures are at their peak pretty much anywhere and everywhere. But those same grass types don't grow very well when the temperatures are 90 degrees plus. So my recommendation is to wait for your forecasted temperatures to drop back down into the 80s to get this project started. For us, we're starting this renovation or this repair job on August 9th. We've gone through a full month of 90 to 100 degree weather, and for the next 10 days, it doesn't look like we're going to get any higher than about 88 to 89 degrees. I'm expecting this lawn to look extremely lush, extremely full by August 30th, just 21 days from now. So by the end of the video, I promise I'm going to show you the results, good or bad, after taking all of the steps that I'm going to go into in this video. This thin lawn fix requires three main steps, and you can get just about everything done on a weekend morning, unless you have like a ginormous lawn. And for normal residential lawns, like you see behind me, you don't usually need any fancy equipment if you don't want to use it or buy it. The first step to this whole process is getting the lawn moist. I recommend watering the lawn very deeply in the wee hours of the morning, just prior to the start of this project. I find it's best to work with damp soil to begin with on this, plus the extra moisture going into the project is really going to help stimulate the semi-dormant grass and bring it back into growth mode just as we're starting to see the first hints of autumn. Last night in this lawn, we experienced a drizzle through the night and then we irrigated first thing in the morning. Now before we take the next steps, I'm actually going to go ahead and hand water the areas of this lawn that don't get hit by a lot of rain because they're under cover and the places that the sprinklers don't hit very well. We want to make sure the entire lawn is as moist as possible, but not muddy before we start. Now with the lawn moist, we want to start off first step with a synthetic fertilizer. We're going to be putting down a light dose, however, because our grass is coming out of a period of stress and some of our grass is semi-dormant. Plus, we don't want to accidentally burn any part of our lawn. The fertilizer that we're going to use is ammonium sulfate. This is a very common ingredient in mixed fertilizer bags. If you look at the bag of just about any fertilizer in the store, you're most likely going to see at least some ammonium sulfate in it. Now, the majority of you are not lawn care addicts, so just run down to your local lawn and garden store and ask the clerk for help finding straight ammonium sulfate or some sort of fertilizer that has a large concentration of it in it. This type of fertilizer can usually be purchased really as a commodity. The brand doesn't really matter, so the price isn't going to be that high. And as opposed to urea nitrogen, when you apply it to damp soil, it's not going to gas off, so you're not going to lose much of the fertilizer to the atmosphere while you're getting the rest of this project done. Ammonium sulfate is water soluble and it's immediately plant available, which means once it gets down into the soil, microbial life in your soil don't need to transform it to make it plant available. It's instantly plant available and that means it goes to work very fast. Now, if you don't have a granular fertilizer spreader, this is the time to buy one. You don't need anything fancy. Just go grab the Scott's Edge Guard, the thing that's sold in every big, big box store across the nation. You don't even need the elite version. Just the regular basic one, the one that's cheap, will probably work just fine for you. The plan here is to use the fertilizer and the spreader to feed the existing grass in your lawn. Regardless of how thin it may look, there is grass there, and by feeding it and giving it a little bit of water, we're going to be promoting tillering, 
thickening of the, the leaf blades, growth of the blades, and spreading of the rhizomatic systems if you have a Kentucky bluegrass or a creeping red fescue. Even if your lawn looks dead, I promise you there's a lot of grass in there that's still alive, even if it doesn't look alive. Now there are, however, some thin spots in the lawn that could definitely use extra new grass to start growing into those spaces. So right after we drop our fertilizer, we're then going to go pick up some grass seed and overseed over the entire lawn, right on top of the fertilizer that's on the ground. Now most cool season lawns, like the one you see behind me, are usually a mixture of Kentucky bluegrass, perennial rye, and tall fescue. A mix of them all, a mix of two of them, or occasionally they're a mono stand. Unless you already know that your grass, that your lawn is a mono stand, I recommend just grabbing a bag of perennial rye and using that to overseed. It's the easiest grass type of them all to grow from seed, and it usually blends really well with all of the other cool season varieties. Now this lawn that I'm working with right back here is a mixture of creeping red fescue and turf type tall fescue. So I won't be overseeding with perennial rye. I'll be overseeding with the exact grass types that I know exist in the lawn. I should also say that if you are running a Kentucky bluegrass lawn, you should expect this entire process to take probably seven to ten extra days. Kentucky bluegrass from seed is the slowest of all of the cool season varieties. Now to spread that grass seed you're going to use the exact same spreader that you use to put the fertilizer down. I do however recommend hand seeding, just sprinkling grass seed across the areas that it's hard to get the spreader on and I tend to hand sprinkle extra seed onto the truly bare spots, the spots that are the worst. You'll usually find existing lawns that are already thick, but coming out of summer dormancy, overseeding usually requires scarification of the lawn itself. But for actual thin lawns with a lot of dirt showing, this is not necessary in my opinion. Hey, say hi. Hi, <laughs> hi mom. <laughs> Now the third step is the one that is actually going to make this entire process a resounding success. It's also the step that most people want to skip or will rationalize skipping and regret it later. You have to cover the seed so that it stays adequately moist at all times and so that the seed doesn't move around due to rain, irrigation, wind, or just your foot or hose. At the same lawn and garden store that you picked up your ammonium sulfate and potentially your lawn spreader, pick up a bag of peat moss. These bags are usually around 60 pounds and they can cover about 500 to 750 square feet of lawn space depending on how thin you spread it. I'm working on an area here of about a thousand square feet, so I'm gonna to try to cover the entire lawn with approximately two bags. When that peat moss is sitting on top of the seed, it's gonna hold moisture far better than the soil underneath it. And consequently, it's not going to let that seed dry out nearly as fast. The peat moss is also gonna insulate the soil from the hot late summer sun, those days where it gets particularly harsh, which is going to further improve the chances of your existing grass performing well at this time of the year. Now spreading peat moss is actually a very messy job, and that's okay, so long as you go into it knowing that. I tend to spread my peat moss by hand, and if I end up needing to, I'll pick up a shovel or a rake to spread it out a little bit thinner or denser in certain areas that I think need it. In some cases, you don't even need a long-handed tool if you're placing the peat moss by hand carefully. What I'm getting at here is that you probably don't need a peat moss spreader unless you're running a property that is gigantic. Most people don't have gigantic yards, so this extra product isn't something that I recommend everyone go and buy. Once that peat moss is fully spread on the ground, I like to use the foot method and walk around the lawn, slowly tamping all of the peat moss down onto the seed by my foot. This does take a little bit longer than using a lawn roller, but again, lawn rollers aren't that big of a deal if you've got the time to walk around your yard for about 15 minutes. If I was doing this project again on a very large property then yeah maybe a lawn roller would make sense but for most people I don't think it's necessary. Now with all of those steps taken this is when we start irrigating our lawn as if there's no grass there. We're trying to germinate grass seed but I wouldn't go overboard since you do have existing grass in the lawn already. With peat moss on the ground, we're gonna be watering this lawn three times every day 
for seven days. And then for the next seven days, we're gonna be watering one time a day. By around day 14, most of our seed will have germinated and our existing grass should be growing pretty good. At that point, we're gonna start watering deeper every other day. During this whole process, the existing grass is actually gonna start growing quite a bit. So, so long as we mow it a few times over those 21 days, by the time three weeks has passed, the baby grass that sprouted should have caught up to most of the existing grass in terms of height. And as you might expect, the whole lawn is going to look much, much better. All right, it's been eight days since I've done anything to this lawn. Uh, we're, we've been letting the fertilizer go, we're letting the seed go, we're keeping water on it. Everything's moist and nice and warm, everything's popping up. Take a look, already eight days. Here's a good example. Look at this. Right in here, that is all brand new baby grass right there. Baby grass. There's baby grass coming up underneath the slide here, you see this? So all that's going to thicken up. I was going to trim the grass today before the seed pops up, but it looks like I'm too late. It's already starting to pop. Over here, under the swing, we got new growth. Under the other swing, new growth. Over here, look, I put a whole bunch over here. The base of this. It's a brand, ton of brand new growth under there. All of this is going to keep thickening up here at the base of this, uh, the base of this stubbed off tree here. We've got a little bit of new growth coming up. There's a dry spot. Everything back here is a little bit dry, so it's going to be slower to come in. But not bad. And that probably means that in the middle of this grass, which I guess you can see right there, there's still new growth popping up. New growth everywhere. I'm going to trim the lawn right now so that the existing grass doesn't get overgrown while we wait for the baby grass to come in. All right, eight more days have passed and this lawn is really thickening up quickly. We're at day 16 out of this 21 day project. Let me show you where we're at before I mow the grass. Last time the grass was cut was eight days ago. And as you can see, we've got a lot of green. It's a little bit fluffy in certain areas and a lot of the thin spots are really starting to fill in. As we look straight down on it, usually this is where it's easiest to see thin spots. And as you can see, there's very little dirt showing. There's still some, but not a lot. If we go right into the middle of the yard, where it was somewhat thin, you can see that it is really starting to come together nicely. And we still got five days to go. Additionally, other areas that just never germinated and grew grass well in the spring have filled in with brand new growth. We've got some coming in behind the tree. We got some coming in underneath the slide. And we're starting to grow behind the play structure as well. And to my delight, this sunny, dry patch over here, that's always dry and sunny, is also starting to come in. There, with a good mow, everything not only looks thicker, but also tidy. And we still got five more days for this thing to get even thicker. I can't wait. All right, it's day 21 since we applied everything to the line, and it is much, much thicker than it was three weeks ago. Let me show you where we're at, but first, I'm gonna trim the lawn so that it actually looks as good as it possibly could. All right, now that is a pretty looking lawn. Clean, tidy, thick, can even see a little bit of striping in there, even though I'm not trying to stripe the lawn. 
Now I put down ammonium sulfate three weeks ago exactly. That fertilizer, that nitrogen is actually still active in the lawn and it's still going to feed the grass here for the next handful of weeks. What we're going to do now is we're going to settle into a low nitrogen fertilization program heavy in biostimulants. This is going to be a very easy product for the homeowner to take over the maintenance of their own lawn. It's also not going to push unnecessary growth, unnecessarily fast growth. I'm going to go into that in the next video in this Phil's Lawn series. The entire playlist to this series is down in the description below. Now if I go through here, you're still going to see some of these thinner areas. This is mostly baby grass coming in and it hasn't quite thickened up as much as the more mature chunks that you see here. But you see very, very little bare dirt. Some of the trouble spots over here will continue to probably be a problem for a little bit because this never gets any water from the sprinkler. Uh, the homeowner does hand water here. So over time, this actually will thicken out a little bit. It probably won't ever look as good as the main lawn until a sprinkler system overhaul happens. We even have nice grass growing on in the uh, super duper shady area here behind the play structure, which is really great. I used ammonium sulfate in the beginning of this video. However, it's not usually a fertilizer that I recommend people use. I use it for very situational uh, needs. If I really need it for something, I will use it. But I tend to prefer natural and organic, slower acting, slower growth inducing products. Things that help the soil and the biology in the lawn itself. If you're interested in that sort of thing, hit that subscribe button. And I do encourage you to watch my entire fall lawn care guide, which is linked right up here in the corner. It goes into everything about taking care of your lawn at the end of summer, going into fall and all the way in to around the holiday season.